All right. Om Kam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhaya Te Girim Yat Karpatam Maham Vande Paramananda Madhavam All right, we stopped somewhere in six, num number six, uh, chapter six, shloka. And we have to move into number seven. So the sixth one was my favorite to fifth and six. Uddhare datmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet atmaiva hyatmano banduh atmaiva ripuh atmanah. Bandhur atma atmanastasya yena atma evatmana jitaha anatmanastu shatrutve vartet atma evashatruvat. So one should raise oneself by, by oneself. One should not put oneself down by oneself. Oneself is the friend to oneself. Oneself is the enemy to oneself. One becomes one, uh, the friend to oneself by the one who conquered himself by himself. <laughs> but the one who is not in charge of himself hates himself as if the enemy. And this is something interesting. Yeah? He hates himself because he cannot manage himself. So. And then we are coming to the shloka number seven. Jitatmanach prashantasya paramatma samahitach shitoshna sukha duch keshu yathamana pamana yo. Jitatmanach prashantasya. So of the one who conquered himself, of the one who is in peace, paramatma samahitach, the greatest self is being established. So it seems that in this conquest of oneself there is a next stage behind that the greater self will reveal itself, yes? Shitoshna sukha duh kesho yathamana pamana yoh. In shita ushna, in the cold and heat, in the dukha and sukha, in the happiness and suffering in the mana apamana yo in the uh, honor and dishonor in all situations the greater self paramatma samahitach uh, is being established is founded it's quite interesting yeah this unexpected twist because uh, why to mention in the uh, heat and cold in the suffering and happiness in the own and dishonor the greatest the greater self is being established of the one who conquered himself of the one who found the peace it's more complex than it looks like. Yeah? It sounds like a very simple statement. But in English, I, I didn't read English. Let me read English. When one has conquered oneself and attained to the calm of a perfect self-mastery and self-possession, then is the Supreme Self in man found and, and poised, even in his outwardly conscious human being in cold and heat pleasure and pain as well as in honor and dishonor so can you imagine the greater self is established in dishonor in suffering in um, cold and heat <laughs> in all the things we try to avoid and to to manage in our life uh, the greater self is established. It reminds me of that passage where the Lord tells to Savitri that I will be everywhere with you in suffering and disaster and collapse. I will be there with you. So, 
don't worry, it will be all right. We have a wrong idea about realization. We think when we realize the divine, everything will be fine, as it were. I think it won't be fine. It will be as it is already, but the divine will be there, present, and that will make everything fine. Okay, and number eight. Jnana vijnana triptatma kuta stach vijitendriyaha yukta ityuchyati yogi samaloshtashma kanchanach. Jnana vijnana triptatma, whose self is rejoicing or satisfied with knowledge and discernment, with self realization and discernment satisfied with self-knowledge and tranquil and self-poised, kutastach, standing at the top, self-poised most probably, vijitendriya, who is master of his senses, who conquered his senses, yuktach, he is regarded ityuchyate, he is called yukta, he is called united, uh, regarding alike clod and stone and gold, sama loshta ashma kanchanach. So loshta is the clay, ashman is the stone, and kanchana is the gold. The one who sees the same in the clay, stone, and gold, he is yogin. For some people, it's quite difficult to see the same thing in gold and stone. <laughs> Still, it's difficult. I can't imagine. For me, it's quite easy. Stone and gold and clay is actually the same matter, a little bit different. Um, maybe what it means that. Um, let us think what it could mean. It could mean that um, there is no projection on how to utilize it and how to use it for one's own benefit. Yeah? Looking at every material as material which can be used appropriately in, in the place where it should be used, without preference of something to some material to the other without trying to sell the gold and get more clay or more stones or something, without being clever <laughs> and managing things. Looking at things as such, without judgment. Maybe. What do you think? Well, uh, Vladimir, doesn't this... Um... This mastery bring a sense of equanimity too, so that mm. there's less desire to um, less pursuit of desire. Yeah, I think so. Yes, that there is no desire to desire in the sense that I will manipulate with something to get something for myself. Yeah, right. Um, it, it could also mean uh, that he recognizes the essence in whether it is stone or wood or gold it is the essence is brahman yeah. and so once you get that realization then it doesn't make a difference what you are looking at very nice thank you this is a great suggestion because summer same seeing same in a, in a stone clay and gold same what would be the same for all of them yeah it is only brahman spirit yeah? which is same everywhere, in every substance, in every presentation, in manifestation. Very nice. Speaking of seeing, Krishna himself is the power of seeing. So if I can step back and offer just the sense of sight back to Krishna, that would be a step in the right direction. But, um, for you especially. <laughs> For me especially, yes. <laughs> you know, the presiding deity. 
but you know this when one has conquered you know my ego wants to run with that vladimir mm-hmm. you know i'll be a good yogi i'm gonna conquer the self and the futility of my ego stepping up to the batter's plate to try to do this you know it, it's like i'll do it for krishna <laughs> you know and at another point krishna says come to me in your anguish and defeat i love it mm-hmm. look for me in your pain look for me in your absolute despair and uh, and i will be there to answer it so it's it's interesting contemplation i don't know where i'm going with this i should stop here you you you're going in the right direction i guess um similar thing happened to sri Aurobindo with krishna himself in alipur jail actually when he was there he actually um, called to Krishna, cried to him, saying, is this the path you prepared for me when he was put into jail? And um, and from that, of that moment, the yoga started to be, he had all kind of experiences. People even say that he levitated. He, he himself mentions that he was under, uh, in the air. So um, there were very powerful experiences. He says that uh, Sri Krishna revealed to him, gave him Gita, revealed to him the meaning of life, that everybody works for him, for Krishna, even those who fight against the Lord, even they are doing his work. (laughs) They think that they fight against him, but um, they do his work because they are triggering um, all kind of forces which need to be activated in this, you know, manifestation of the divine without knowing it. There is also a story when he was in jail that uh, the divine form of Vivekananda came. Right. Uh, And and he insisted that you better learn this. (laughs) And he's not leaving till he learns this whole (laughs) spiritual path. (laughs) he, He describes that in his book. Yeah, yeah. And he, Vivekananda showed him the intuitive levels of the mind and in that into towards the overmind. And that was something he had to go beyond this kind of illumined mind. These were the openings for the future yoga, what Sri Aurobindo did towards the supermind. And it was Vivekananda. And it, actually, it's a puzzling thing in the in the story of Vivekananda and Sri Aurobindo's relations, you know. First of all, Sri Aurobindo was very fond of Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, very fond of. And Vivekananda had to leave his body before in order to, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like this, in order to come to, to Sri Aurobindo in Alipur jail to teach him something very essential for this yoga. And I even believe that Ramakrishna and Vivekananda were, were first two who came before, as if before Sri Aurobindo and the mother, yes, laid down the foundation for this future development of yoga. And Sri Aurobindo picked up and continued this development. Even this I believe, but that is very personal, I think so. And it's quite interesting because Ramakrishna was the bhakta of Kali, of the mother. <laughs> quite amazing, yes. And uh, Vivekananda is kind of closer to Sri Aurobindo and Ramakrishna to the bhakta of the mother. <laughs> so, but it's a it's a way of thinking about it, yeah, which is of of the disciple of Sri Aurobindo and the mother, yeah, rather than who, uh, anybody else. Yes, and in Alipur jail, when he saw Krishna in everything, in everybody, that's exactly what happened. Uh, he saw first, um, he realized already that Samam Brahman, he had the realization of Nirvana, but it wasn't enough, it seems, that it was the beginning of some higher realization of cosmic Brahman, you know, dynamic Brahman. Um, spiritual realization, which he got in Alipur jail, where he saw Krishna in everything, in everyone, in all those thieves and murderers in, in the jail. 
I, I was there. Have you been to Alipur jail? No. I went there especially to see where Sri Aurobindo was in his cell. Uh, and it was quite interesting because they had the portrait there and some, you know, some incense sticks, flowers. And so these uh, thieves and murderers and all those, you know, inmates of jail come there to put some incense sticks because they believe that Sri Aurobindo was one of them. So one of the thieves, <laughs> of the bandits. So they go there to do puja <laughs> to their own deity. <laughs> this is funny because this is, <clears throat> this can happen only in India. <laughs> Such a respect <laughs> for their own person. <laughs> it's beautiful anyway. It's very touching, very moving to think of it in this way. So he brought even into that jail that light, you know. Of course, Krishna was there, what to say more, with him, teaching him. Vivekananda came to show the higher levels of consciousness. Yeah, it's a profound thing. Yeah, and that Samalosh Tashmakan Janam could be also of this, that he saw in everything and everywhere the presence of the deity, yes? There is no difference in the material. He saw in the bars of his cell, as he says, the presence of Krishna protecting him. Yeah? And in the, in the shade of the tree, the tree was Krishna who was giving shade against the sun. And in everyone, he saw the presence of Narayana. Uh, so that oneness, that non-distinguishing within the substance, but seeing everything as the divine, is um, the, the quality we have to, to get. So who is happy in Jnana and Vijnana, in self-realization and self-discernment? Oh. Vijnana we can take even in the higher sense as a supermind. Um, but not in the Gita. So, so uh, yeah. Sorry, I think in this sloka, the central key is the Indriya, the the uh, the control of the the control of the sense. Yeah. Because if, if he can control the sense, after that, everything is the same. Everything is possible, yeah. You can no, see not, the not, truth. No, the truth is the... It's, it's the difference between different uh, uh -huh. materials are not different anymore if you control the sense, the senses. Interesting. Good thought, actually. Because it's, it's through the senses, the out of control, when you have desire and everything, uh, this fragmentation of, of your relation with the, with the world. Mm. This, I think this is the, the key in this sloka. How you relate with the injuries, with your senses. Yeah. With control or under control or out of control. Right. Yeah. There is one more thing of this, whose self is enjoying the self-realization and discernment. And that is Jnana Vijnana Triptatma, who is rejoicing or enjoying, satisfied with knowledge, self-knowledge and not with the, with the materials, with the senses. You know, senses are no more uh, the drive to satisfaction, so to say. He is not relying on the senses to get the satisfaction for himself. And in that sense, he is freed. Mm. Excuse me, can, can you explain the difference between uh, the, the B? B? B makes the difference. No, between jnana and vijnana. Yeah, jnana vijnana. What, what, what is b? 
It's interesting that he, uh, in the Gita, he mentions this several times, not just Jnana, but Jnana vi Jnana. Um, there are several shlokas and where he, both are mentioned for some reason. You know? One can think about it, what it means. Sri Aurobindo even doesn't do anything about this. You know? He he who is satisfied with self-knowledge he maybe even it is not his translation i do not know for sure but jnana uh, jnana why both are mentioned there is a, some kind of reason if you think of it a little um, what do you think uh, i want to know your thoughts why both are mentioned jnana is self-knowledge or self-realization or knowing um through one's own experience things yes realizing oneself and by realization of oneself knowing things and vijnana is like the same knowledge but all comprehensive knowing of things which are related to yourself in a meaningful fashion it is something which is like a comprehensive cognition as it were if jnana is more uh, self-knowing, then vijnana is comprehensive knowing of oneself in every being, everywhere. Uh, in the in the Sanskrit word vijnana, the closest uh, English translation is science. So we we call science, which is uh, intellectual understanding of the knowledge. So jnana is knowledge, vijnana is, so jnana is more of a, is the spiritual knowledge, uh, deeper understanding. And vijnana is the jiva's understanding of that knowledge. And that's why there is, you know, in the, uh, in, uh, there are five koshas. So one of the koshas, you have annamaya kosha, you have pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, and then the Vigyanamaya Kosha, which is the intellect, which is at the jiva level, understanding of the uh, jnana or true knowledge at the intellect level. Yeah, well, that is uh, especially in the post-Vedic, yes, in the post-Vedic tradition, Vijnana, Vigyan is already a scientific knowledge and so on, but not in the Veda. Huh? In the Veda and not in the Gita here yet. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, the div there is this term got developed, so to say, and deviated from its purpose of Vijnana as supermind. Sri Aurobindo speaks about this. For him, Vijnana is the supramental consciousness. Huh? And Vijnana Maya Purusha in the Taitiriya, it is that level. It's not intellect, it's beyond. It's this supramental intellect, if you will. Huh? Mm. And then later, with the, with the loss of the supermind in the philosophy and uh, shifting towards the beyond, towards the transcendental Advaitic approach, so the whole purpose of Vijnana was lost, and the whole level of overmind of this three Rochanas, of those levels which uh, Vivekananda was showing to Sri Aurobindo, also got lost. And those levels were called the levels of Maya, of illusion, started to be an illusion of some kind, which we have to cross over, to go to the transcendental Satchitananda, you have to cross over, over mental levels, forget about Vijnana, Vijnana is not important go to the transcendental Brahman, yes, Sat Chit Ananda. And there you dissolve yourself. That became a new yoga, as it were, in the post-Vedic period. Uh, but here it is still one foot is in that Upanishadic understanding of Vijnana in the Gita, I believe so at least. So it is like, uh, and there are several of them. There is Samajnana, Vijnana, Prajnana, Ajnana. All of them are mentioned in Aitareya. And Sri Aurobindo also gives a very interesting exposition on these, what these are, and why Samajnana is a knowledge by identity. Ajnana is the this Ajna chakra, yes, that command, will, power of the word. 
uh, Vijnana is the comprehensive knowing of all the details and properties, comprehensive cognition, as he calls it, yeah, in uh, the uh, in the Ken Upanishad, uh, in the notes on Ken Upanishad, he describes this Vijnana, and he speaks about the supramental uh, knowledge there also. So. This kind of comprehending oneself in relation to all other true relations with other selves. I would translate it like this. Yeah? Knowing oneself and comprehending all true relations with other selves. It's something similar to what Shirobindo saw in Alipur jail, when he saw in every thief and murderer the presence of Krishna inside. <laughs> the true being within. Something of the kind, I believe. So he could have true relations with them without being, you know, bewildered by their appearance uh, that they are uh, thieves and murderers. And that is the judge or um, the... Because when he saw the judge, he saw Krishna smiling at him, you know, uh, asking him, so... What now? Are you afraid now? <laughs> the judge is sitting, <laughs> sitting there and smiling to him. So um, he had totally different realization of the presence of the divine in others. And I think that might be that Vijnana, true relations with other selves. That's why they are mentioned together. I, that was a, my trial to answer to you, Siegfried, asking why Jnana Vijnana Triptatma. Yeah, but when, when we use the, the, the concept supramental, uh, it's like we, we are making a difference between what is mental and what is conscience, isn't yeah. it? Yeah then supramental is, is out of the, the mind. Yeah, it's a the, su it, supreme it, mind. It is still mind, but it is super mind. Okay, then we, we diminish um, the mind. No? We put down the mind relatively. If it would be just something away from the mind, there is over mind, over mind. It is still mind, but it is higher of a greater mind. Yeah, Shabindu in the Savitri would be speaking about the regions of greater mind and then greater knowledge. He will use word knowledge rather than mind. Yeah, um, but there is a, of course, there can be a much of dispute because these are levels far beyond our reach and far beyond our comprehension um, yes, but but is is far from the mind but not for the conscience i think this is the the main purpose of use supramental is yeah. to, to accept main, mind has limitations but if we are talking about su supramental, is because we can achieve through the conscience. Yeah. Yeah. If but, not, we can talking about supramental. Right. Um, Vijnana is the link between Satchitananda and this world, as you know. Yes. So it is that link in which. <clears throat> Both are present, paraprakriti and aparaprakriti come together as if overlapping, as if one is manifesting the other already in the true sense. And in on that level, as Taitiriya would say, Vijnanam Yajinam Tanute, Vijnana pulls out or manifests the sacrifice, creates the sacrificial action. Karmani tanute picha and spreads all the activities of consciousness. Yes, so in all the forms, uh, are being manifested on the level of vijnana before it is revealed in this manifestation in time and space. So even time and space are part of that creation in on the vijnana level. Yes? They are being. Um, 
prepared and pulled out or manifested? I would like to, uh, maybe Marta to try to to answer this question because these are fundamentals of integral yoga. Please, Marta, would you like? Well, thank you. One of the things that came to mind during this previous discussion is that um, Sri Aurobindo explains that these higher levels of mind are levels of being, actual levels of being. So they, and they are above the intellect, way above the intellect as we know it. Uh, for example, illumined mind, a mind of light, you know, where, um, I don't know, it's indescribable, <laughs> but, you know, in, in, intuition is not at all like the common intuitions that we that we ordinarily say, you know, we have a feeling about this. Or, I, my mother used to be a bit psychic, and she would, uh, she would know things that were going to happen. But it, that was not even the the level of intuition that Sri Aurobindo speaks of, because it's it's a, a way of knowing that's that's it's it's a level of consciousness, and it's not at all related to mind as as we think of it. And then the supramental, supramental, Sri Aurobindo being such a classicist really means above mind, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. it's way beyond mind and uh, inconceivable to us unless and until we get there. Mm -hmm. But I think for, for me, the, the, the main point that I take into it is that, that really speaks to me is that these higher levels of, of consciousness are levels of being, actual levels of being. So in that way, it's quite different from mental capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so quite amazing too, um, that um, um, I'm just gathering from everywhere what Sri Aurobindo says on the supermind, and of course it is far beyond mental capacity of judging or viewing or approaching or intelligence. It's not that it's the it's comprehensive cognition which knows things simultaneously in all the properties, all details, all relations, all meanings, simultaneously at once. So this kind of comprehensive intellect we don't even have, even the highest comprehensive intellect we may have, it will be just a shadow of that uh, of that capacity of consciousness, which is going far beyond. But quite interestingly that why Sri Aurobindo left that word mind there, uh, there is a most probably the reason, and I want to share with you what I think, why he left super mind such a heavy word. Actually, this word also turns away many people because it sounds very, very heavy and very difficult to understand why super mind, supramental, yes, superman, these all these words. But most probably it was difficult to find other equivalent for that particular uh, level of being and consciousness and power yeah and somewhere he says that without the super mind we cannot understand mental operations it seems that the whole mental world all the mind whatever from the highest to the lowest to the physical somehow is managed or generated on the supramental level. So we will never understand how mind works until we realize the supermind. Somewhere he speaks about this in the letters. And um, and that yeah. Yeah, hit this me. Why, mm. so, sorry, this is why we don't have perspective. Mm. If if we if we don't can, if we don't have that uh, perspective from the supermind, we can understand mind because yeah. we can't have perspective to understand. 
Yeah, we don't have the right perspective to understand right. the mind. We, right. we, we operate by it, but we do not see what it does and why it does what it does on each level. We do not know why it behaves on the physical level in this way, on the vital in this way, on the mental on this way. You know, there are the levels of the mind also from, from the ordinary reasoning to the higher intelligence, symbolic thinking or paradoxical thinking. So we can analyze it but we do not see what it how it all relates to one that one capacity to manifest the divine and that's what it is the purpose you know, of the mind to manifest the divine on the physical level so it has to work out all the details of consciousness and being in such a way that it would manifest time and space and in time and space all the varieties of the divine being and so could that, we call this as uh, divine intelligence then? Vigyan is divine intelligence? In a way, yes. It is that comprehensive power of cognition, of knowing everything, all the details, all the relations, all the meanings in the holistic way, at, in simultaneous way. I had a lot of um, discussions with even Devashish. I wrote the whole article on this, Samjnana, Vijnana, Prajnana, and Ajnana. And because we didn't find the common understanding on Vijnana, I kind of skipped publishing the article even. Because um, he, he believed, and it's quite interesting that we all of us have a very partial entry to this topic because yes how else we could have it's a holistic understanding he believed that it is a vision vijnana must be representing the vision yeah it's like you see everything simultaneously in all the details and all the varieties and i believed <laughs> that it is a hearing it's like a pervasive a comprehensive holding all the vibrations and varieties of relations, where relations become totally meaningful in a holistic sense, like the spirit holds all the varieties within itself in the same way Vijnana holds all the meaningful relations. Mm, and I think both of them are there. <laughs> you know, why, why couldn't you, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, but couldn't we boil it down to something very simple as truth? Supermental is the truth. Yeah. You know, it makes me think of Maheshwari, uh, you know, all, all knowing, vast knowledge, all comprehending. Yeah, so on, even, one, even, on one even level, yeah. Beyond, even beyond sight and hearing and all this it can and, hold all its truth it's it's it is all encompassing all all knowing T -t to me that seems you know and and i don't know but why you were why you were talking it reminded me of this this quote that i mentioned to you that this morning that um if i can recall it now correctly but um truth truth is not linear it's it's global mm -hmm. truth is is not uh sequential it's simultaneous and therefore truth cannot be expressed by words it can only be experienced so this is beyond anything even any of the faculties to me right even beyond the word of expression it's experiential it, it is it is live you know it i don't know how else to put it then i see it as you know that which is is all true all comprehending yeah my simple definition but very nice very very nice definition truth and shabindu calls this as truth consciousness yes so that's exactly how he calls the super mind mm -hmm. you know, what, what was interesting and and maybe i can um, ask martha here because you you had a comment um i think it was last time martha that made me uh want to circle back to where you you mentioned that you know the the gita and krishna doesn't really speak about uh transformation right there there's not this emphasis on transformation in the gita as we find in integral yoga and yet krishna was a, a great teacher and uh, god had to uh 
Sri Aurobindo um, and, you know, taught him, showed him, I, I guess, with Vivekananda, but I thought also Krishna, the over mental, which has powers of transformation. And so I'm curious, Martha, how you or if you reconcile, how, why is it that the, the Gita doesn't put as much emphasis on transformation as we later see Sri Aurobindo and the mother do? Well, I guess my understanding of it is that um, humanity wasn't ready for it. Um, of course, we're not ready for it now, <laughs> but um, it, it and it didn't come down. The supermental uh, consciousness did not manifest in the Earth atmosphere until um, you know during Sri Aurobindo and the Mother's time. Um, I think it was 1956 is the the, uh, the date that the mother puts on it. Um, so I think it was a, an evolutionary, I would see it in evolutionary terms that the earth wasn't really ready for that at that point. And Krishna manifested as much as the truth as humanity was able to um, appreciate and absorb at that time. And it, it's a, a truth that of course is, is valid even now. We just see um, a progression, a grace as, as going beyond uh, what is contained specifically in the Gita. Now it may be implied there somewhere, but I haven't seen it myself. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, uh, you know, to me, what you say makes some sense. If Sri Krishna is the over mental and introduce Sri Aurobindo to the over mental, it's not yet that uh, conscious uh, energy that can actually do that final transformation, which is the super mental. And if that's what Sri Aurobindo came here to do, then it would make sense that until then, you know, that transformation may not have been. Um, a large part of the, of the path. Thank you. Uh, Robert, are you, in this case, are you talking about physical transformation or just psychological transformation? Uh, all the way up, right? To psychic to spiritual, all the way, all the way mm -hmm. up. Um, so you're right. I mean, there is, because, you know, because I said, you know, in the over mental, yes, there are powers there definitely that can do, uh, that, that can, transformative powers and yet the ultimate transformation really isn't going to come till the supermental mm -hmm. i guess that's what i was referring to is that a, a correct understanding robert yeah that's what i understood okay so, so did, did you get that i'm sorry i, I apologize you did or not but um that's what i understand that the, the only the supermental can bring the physical transformation but i think psychological and so, transformation of consciousness was out before as each avatar came along right right absolutely that's uh, how we understand it from the live divine and so on that uh, we have first psychic then spiritual and then finally supramental transformation which makes sense which wasn't there there so much the, the the topic because because those previous have to be established and their soul has to find their beloved one and to connect with him and that is everything what is to be done what was to be done in that time and it was done uh, in this manifestation of this concept vision force force was there to do it for anybody who could do it who would want to do it so it is still here for us waiting for us to be uh, has to be utilized by us. It was utilized by Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo did this, yes. And he, as he says somewhere in the letter, the message was interesting. It, it, or it is the mother says, first Krishna, then me. There is a certain progression of the development. Yeah? Um, and this Purna Yoga of the Gita was to be realized fully before that supramental yoga could be effectuated. Yeah? That's why Gita is so important, because it 
rounds up all the all the hard work which we have to do before the supramental manifestation becomes possible. Vladimir, mm. of the senses, I am the mind. Have we passed that, or is it yet to come? Um, Krishna says, of the senses, I am the mind. I take my seat firmly there. And I don't, I don't, I hear this and I, I agree. I love Martha's thing. I mean, in my commentary, it says, okay, if I consider worldly knowledge, I see that it is false. When he sees rightly, he knows that he himself is knowledge. At which point I say, I'm probably a far way off from seeing myself as knowledge. <laughs> so I still separate the terms, but there's a verse in here somewhere where Krishna says, of the senses, I am the mind. And I'm not yeah, sure. right. Later, when Vibhuti Yoga comes in chapter 10, when he will be interestingly defining, as again, that very thing, defining in nature his presence. Yeah? So if you take all the senses, there will be the mind. The mind will be the leader of all the senses. So. And uh, everywhere in the, in the fire, he is the heat. Yeah, or the light, and so on and so forth. He will be defining himself as the quality of the uh, particular event or particular manifestation. Excuse me, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. It's great. Yeah, with the supermind and overmind is uh, is a big topic. Yeah. Sorry, Vladimir, I want to finish or complete sure. the, the comments with Janya Vijan. Um, could be Janya Prakriti and Vijana Purusha, and and I want to remember you. Can you explain me what what means B? B Vijana B. Vijnana V means uh, moving in two different directions, like holding two in one. So to say, taking all the opposites into oneself. And from here we have this discernment, Viveka. From here we have also the idea of, of knowing all the details and all the properties simultaneously. Yes? V has many propositions, so kind of departing, splitting, dualizing even, holding two in one, all that. Interconnection could be, interconnection. Yeah. Yes, interconnection. That's, that's where I got this meaning of comprehensive cognition. Yeah? comprehending my relations, true relations with others, true selves. So this comprehension is built on this a relation, a relational knowledge. And, and then could be Vijana, Purusha? Oh, they are both Vijnana. Vijnana is self-realization, knowing oneself. Vijnana, knowing oneself in all the activities and relations. This is what I, how I see it. Yeah? I don't think Purusha and Prakriti are, well, you can say that Vijnana is already manifesting because it is higher Prakriti in a way, para Prakriti. So it is the manifestation of the spirit in all the varieties and all the properties. She is the Shakti. And as uh, Radha rightly said, it's Maheshwari in the highest level. Because the uh, supermind is also not one being. It's a triple supermind, as Sri Aurobindo describes this in the life divine. There is a higher supermind where there is all unifying and all overviewing the power of thought, which is connected to Daksha, Aditya. And then there is this many in one and one in many, which is Amsha, supermind. And then finally, many, or manifestation of the all the individual properties in their true being, in their true sense, their true consciousness, and which which leads us to the manifestation of the overmind. Finally, finally, everything is prepared in this triple supermind to reveal the triple overmind. Three rochanas, that means supramental over mind, over mind and intuition. And then to reveal triple the heaven of the three minds of the into illumined mind, higher mind and mind proper. 
and then finally we have a triple um, the vital world uh, uh, trini rajansi that means the uh, the mental vital 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 and physical vital and finally triple physical which means the mental physical vital physical and physical proper and these are the notice that everywhere this triplicity starting from the supermind is maintained one is overviewing holding everything as oneness other is one in many many in one there is a this um, what do you call it hmm. uh, distribution of one in many and many seen in one as Shubindo beautifully describes supermind as the drops of honey which are tasting all the drops simultaneously and all the drops taste this drop of honey knowing the taste of each honey drop so that is many in one in one in many and then each one though individually revealed is knowing its own truth in relation to the one yeah? though it is uniquely manifested this is the triple supermind and notice that mind vital and physical again repeats this triplicity mind is more unifying element conceptualizing of um, vital is more diversifying bringing all the energies and shaping them in different life forms and finally the physical form is totally diversified every physical form is uniquely presenting itself without possibility of repeating each uh, any as we know yes there are no same fingerprints there are no same leaves on the tree you will never find the same leaf on the tree in the whole forest on the whole earth there will be some difference unique difference and this is something to think of you know? that's kind of infinity of, of manifestation in the physical which is revealed through this supramental um, creation so it's quite an, an image you know? and supermind is needed for that supermind is needed for the physical to come into being and that is something to think of you know that 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 mental physical which is there <laughs> is a representative of that supramental concept of manifesting it in its total uniqueness and infinite variety I said too much, most probably, yes. Does not it make... All. Not at all, Vladimir. No? You didn't speak too much. That was a, a really beautiful and uplifting summary. Uh, that was lovely. Well, it comes from what Shirobindo says and from the Vedic studies. When he, he takes the Vedas, you can see the same Adityas levels. You see three Rochanas, these two, three luminous realms of the sun, of the ray of the sun, which over mind represents. And then you see Tisro uh, Dyavach. Tisro Dyavach is three heavens. Why there are three heavens in the Veda? And then you have uh, three Nirajansi, three luminous realms of the vital world of Antariksha. And then they speak about three earths. Yeah? Tisru Bhumik. Unbelievable. Three earths. So three earths, three vital realms, three heavens of the mind, three over mental luminous realms, and then there is a triple supermind beyond. And it's all mentioned in the Veda. So Shirobindo basically maps out all this vision in his, um, in his uh, integral yoga. So one helps the other to understand how yeah? well, they interact. I do not know, Zif Siegfried, whether it is answering something. Yeah? There, there is one thing is not clear for me yet. Uh, then, Vijana is the interlink between Prakriti and Purusha, or Vijana is Purusha? Everything is Purusha. 
and everything is Prakriti. And this is a difficult part because there is higher Prakriti, that means higher force and consciousness of Purusha. Purusha is the person, yeah? person, and personality, that uh, um, supreme personality which represents which is representative of Purushottama, of the one who alone is, let us say like this. And he with his consciousness, power and bliss manifests himself in all his infinite varieties. Where Vijnana plays this role, which introduces the technology of his manifestation in time and space. Vijnana creates time and space in which he will be spelled out, will be translated in his infinite possibilities and capacities. So he is everywhere and she is everywhere. Purusha and Prakriti are on all the levels. Of course, on, uh, in Sankhya, it is viewed very mentally. It's a mental uh, knowledge where Purusha is beyond, Prakriti is here, Purusha looks at Prakriti, Prakriti moves. It is a mental explanation of this process, which is easier for the mind to understand. Um, but that is just a system of philosophy. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, I think we can stop here. If you have some thoughts on the uh, supermind and how, how physical and what is beautiful in this vision, why Sri Aurobindo and the mother so insist on the supermind that physical itself is the enterprise of the supramental manifestation. Physical could not come into being without the supramental laying down all these infinite varieties of the truth. These, these unique manifestations in physical world are the result of that action of the supermind, triple supermind. Yeah, physical is the part of that supramental creation. That's what it is. It's not some other physical away from the supermind. It is inbuilt into it. It is its part. It's manifestation, it's revelation, it's, uh, it's action. I know, our mind split already onto the spirit and matter, this and that world, but when the supermind comes back, there is no more split, it, and the whole manifestation is seen as the divine enterprise yes, of the spirit. And that's why they wanted Supermind back into our minds, that we could start seeing this world as not something which we have to leave and run away from to some spirit beyond, but the spirit is here and it is happening right now here in every form, in every manifested form. And if we could see it, the world would change. For, for me, uh... My my interpretation about that is is um, information and vibration. Supermind is information, all information if you want, and vibration in all the frequencies together. Information and vibration. I you know, and I, I, yeah, make yeah. the dynamism of the transformation. But what? So I. I think I agree with you because what I was thinking at the same time is that it's, you know, what Shio Bindo did is introduced uh, tapas to Sat Chitananda. Tapas is that energy, that vibration, that pulsation, and that that supramental is the Chit Shakti, the knowledge of creation and the power of creation coming together, the ability to create. So that vibration and the knowledge or the truth and the vibration. So I, I, I I think that's kind of what you were saying, Siegfried, or at least what came to mind in court. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
And by the way, um, well, Chit Tapas Chit Shakti is known in the tradition, but but it is never emphasized in that way as Sri Aurobindo did in the supramental way. Yeah? And that is yes, it's very true that it's on the supramental level the the consciousness and power are absolutely equal. They are equalized. What is consciousness? What consciousness sees that power does. There is no more dichotomy. There is no more uh, difference. It's in this world of time and space there is a huge difference between what I see, what I want, and what I receive or get. Yeah, because power is always delayed. Power is never matching with consciousness. There is a mismatch, and that is that mismatch is time and space basically. Yeah, so. If they matched, because on the supramental level there is no time and space in that form as we know it here, there is no mismatch between power and consciousness. So Shubhendra says, if there would be any need on, on the supramental level of consciousness, any smallest need in one corner of the totality, the whole system would rush in that moment of time to cover the need. So there is no possibility of having any need, any lack, any gap within the system of the supermind, because it is totally taking charge of everything what is there. So if you think about it, you know, then we see that in this world it's not the case. Yeah? It's, uh, it's always delayed, we need to make an, an effort, an intention, an aspiration to receive something, to realize something. That is the time and space. I do have a comment on what Siegfried was saying about uh, Vijnana is uh, information and vibration, but isn't the vibration is the information? So it's really just one. You can call it, it is the information is embedded in the vibration. Vibration, Shubindo describes, if you want, um, just uh, this kind of elaboration on vibration, it's quite interesting, that he says, if there would be no vibration of being in consciousness, there would be no sense. And if it would be no vibration of being in force, there would be no object of sense. So vibration is both consciousness, yeah? being vibrating in consciousness creates sense, and being vibrating in power creates the object of sense. Thank you. Yeah, this is a profound statement. It, it requires dwelling. <laughs> Well, Krishna just had a wonderful conversation with himself, <laughs> according to all this higher knowledge. I love it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. So shall we close with mantra for today? What do you think? Yeah? If there is no more, or oh, Siegfried wants to say something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you are very generous with me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have another idea. You say there is no lack, there is no uh, gap. gap, there is no need. Yeah, it's, maybe there is not anything of that. It's and still only, everything is there. But maybe the gap, the need, the lack is through our interpretation we, because we don't have under control the senses. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. We, we have a gap between the power and the consciousness and that gap with space. I'm not one with every one of you yet. We are separated by space and time and, uh, 
and uh, evolutionary process and so many things we are separated uh, my mind even separated from my feelings and from my heart my heart from my will my body lives its own life my mind lives its own and they go in different directions i say one thing and feel another and think another and i can't put them together even within one framework what to say about um, being one with everything and all simultaneously it's a big uh, achievement and realization definitely great so then i will close with mantra om sarve bhavantu sukhinaha sarve santo niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet Om shanti 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 And thank you everyone for your inputs and your thoughts and sharing um, these insights and inquiring into these profound matters. Of course, we didn't hear anything from Charles and Teresa today. That's kind of, but uh, Charles, would you like to say the last word? I believe I have to listen to this very recording several times. It's it's so full that um, I'm looking I'm looking at myself for application of of what I heard to my life right now. Great. Okay, thank you all and all the best. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Stay, thank you.